Hey, what's up, everybody? John, John, back with another vlog. On the on the topic of my last vlog, I'm a, ugh, I can't talk. On the topic of my last video, it it will continue the same theme where I did a top list of game series that I that I've either played or watched or played with a buddy or a friend of mine or things like that. But with since 2017 came to an end, I want to look back and rank my top 10 games of 2016-2017. And I want and again, let me let me remind you guys that these are ones that I personally played or I have posted on the channel or I have played with a buddy of mine when I was away from my house or when I was hanging out with them and stuff like that so number number one top game of 2016 2017 was un well it's two it's two entries in one it's uncharted for a thieves end which was the adventure of Nathan Drake and his brother Sam Drake and it was the final adventure for Nathan, for Nathan Drake and his wife Elena and his buddy Victor Sullivan as they find one more treasure before Nathan Drake entered retirement. In the in an, in the second one on this first entry is Uncharted: A Lost Legacy, where it was it was a continuation of Uncharted Four. Where it followed Chloe Frazier and Nadine Ross. Nadine was a mercenary who was a main was a main was one of the main villains in Uncharted Four, and Chloe Frazier is our good is Nathan Drake's, I'd say, how do I put this, business associate that he's also had a fling with. That you saw evident in Uncharted 2, Among Thieves, which was one of the best entries in the in the series of Uncharted, besides this one. Now Chloe, Chloe and Nadine have a partnership where they are in a deal to get this artifact before this archaeologist plans to steal it and use it and use it in the wrong ways possible. But they, but they, they come across as they progress. They learn, they learn more about each other and actually get to develop a f friendship and a partnership. Well, coming across Samuel Drake, who Nadine did not really care for whatsoever. She did not like. She did not like either Nathan or Sam, but. The three of them had this partnership, and they, and during their adventure, they got they got the treasure, and Chloe Chloe discovered her father's her father's lifelong discovery, which he was not able to find before he passed away. But he was on the trail of something. She happens to find it with the help of Nadine and Sam Drake. Number two, number two on this list is Fallout Four. Now, Fall now Fallout has been an incredible series where they get to go on places like Boston, among others, Fallout Fall or the or the barren wastelands that you would see in Mad Max. Fallout Four took place in Boston. And you would see Fenway Park. You would see a wasteland, a nuclear explosion. What would be Fenway Park? In what would be where Paul Revere's house is, among other among other areas across the great city of Boston. And then with all with all you get this companion of the of the of the German Shepherd you see in the trailer. And you get to use these exosuits and 
of course, all the fun, loving weapons and the, and the contraptions you get to build. This time you get to build stuff like robots. You get to build a bunch of weapons. You get to build a bunch of exosuit upgrades. You even get to make armor for your dog as you go across the, the barren remains of Boston if it suffered from uh, from a nuclear fallout but this but this one had DLC DLC up the yin yang this one had far harbor which was a, was one of the strongest additions to this game far harbor was in Maine well it was in a in in Maine where all these creatures and fog and atmospheric darkness and stuff took took place among the radiation of course and then you get the workshop where you get to build traps or fight stages where where you get to have the where you get to set up creatures or humans in a simulated fight to the death at your own base and then Nuka World was a take on. It was it was a Nuka Cola company, but it, but it was it was almost like a. It was almost like a take on Disneyland, or. Or Hollywood, or because it was a theme park, so it preferably was more Disneyland, but. Fallout 4 and the predecessor Fallout 3 were the two best games of the Fallout series. Number 3 on this list, and I mentioned it in my last list of list of series was Final Fantasy 15, where we saw Noctis and his and his three friends try to try to see who try to take down the company that took down that killed their king as Noctis tries to reclaim the throne that's rightfully his but this game had everything it had warp strikes it had it had upgrade upgrades it had the weapons it had the armor it had the accessories it had the DLC for for each ally it had the episode Gladiolus, where it was a strong muscular bodyguard that that was taking a, a trial, a warrior's trial, to establish himself as a true as a true knight of the of the of the throne. And then there was an episode Prompto, where it was where it was a friend a. Where it was Noctis's friend who, who was bullied as a kid. He was he was kind of he was kind of fat. He was kind of the big, big bus big kid of the group. He was kind of the quiet one, but they accept they accepted him for who he was and welcomed him into into their kingdom because he had no he had no family to speak of. He was. He was by himself. They welcomed him in with open arms, and they developed a friendship over the course of the years. And then it was, and then there was episode Ignis, where Ignis was the brainiac of the group, and he was also the cook of the group. And they and they get to show the backstories on them, on each ally, on each friend of Noctis. And how they and how they all intertwined to share the adventure together, and not and as Noctis was try was getting to the throne, he was trying to reunite with his childhood love and love the princess of the other of the ne neighboring kingdom. But hands down, Final Fantasy fifteen is a close second to Final Fantasy VII. Number number four on this list is Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now Tomb Raider now Tomb Raider is is a ta is a series that's 
been going on for 20 years now and they're coming out with they're coming out with a remake of the movie that originally starred Angelina Jolie those ones were and John Boyd those ones back in the early 2000s were good movies this remake this remake however focuses on more of the new remakes of the game where it shows a younger Laura Croft who's not yet who's not yet the established explorer that she is now with Rise of the Tomb Raider Laura, Laura discovers the discovers the history of the Croft Manor and who her father was and what happened to her mother as they, as they, as she goes into a little bit of Greek mythology with with all these Greek soldiers that were were made of Greek fire and brimstone as she deals with Constantine and Anna 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 was the one who married her father that led to that led to his death because she because be, she betrayed the family and sided with her brother so she takes so Laura seeks out to find the divine source which would grant would grant the person in, will grant whoever wields it immortality and and Constantine and Anna want to use it for other purposes they wanted to create an army that would wipe out everybody but Laura, Laura succeeds and from start to finish you got you got these scenes where you're running during you're running during during disasters like a snow a snowstorm and a uh, you're dealing with broken broken ship broken boats as you try to swim against the currents. You're dealing with planes that are chasing you as you're running and zip lining. And you're avoiding gunfire, all the as well as you're discovering ancient tombs that were long hidden in in the world, and you had to go down these caves and solve all these puzzles and just to learn learn history and learn new abilities. But the new the remakes of the Tomb Raider. Rise the Tomb Raider Definitive and Rise of the Tomb Raider were good. Were awesome games. The original the original Tomb Raider now the Tomb Raiders that were released in around two thousand seven ish, where it was Tomb Raider Legend, Tomb Raider Anniversary, and Tomb Raider Underworld. Before prior to this one, were good good. And were, could be used as a good ending to end Tomb Raider, to end Laura's story. But Rise of Tomb Raider is a retelling of when, before she was established as one of, one of the most renowned treasure hunters that people, that people, that people know. Now, number five is a game I finished just recently on my channel. And it was also developed by Ninja Theory. That, that created games like Heavenly Sword, which, which was like a Japanese female version of God of War. Number, number five is Hellblade Senua's, Sacrif Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Which, which I didn't know much about. I saw I saw a game I saw gameplays here and there, but once I once I started playing the game, you get instantly dwelled into the Norse Viking Viking era and 
as you as you see this girl Senua who who suffers from a real life condition called psychosis where I think it stemmed from her being isolated af and after losing the love after losing her loved her beloved but she learns she can re she can have him resurrected because she carries his she carries his head his head with her, with her as she dwells into hell to uh, to confront the goddess Hela to to bargain for for her beloved's life to be restored but the whole time she's battling herself cuz thoughts thoughts in her head are telling her you you will not make it you will die and she's pressing on being chased by the darkness of her past cuz she cuz she had this ancient curse on her and and the darkness continued to grow now this is a cool aspect of this game because each time you died, you would have this dark rot grow on your arm, and if it reached your brain, your progress would stop, and you would have to start the game all over again. Cause there was no there was no manual saves; it was only auto saves, so it's pretty much a one shot deal. But you deal with all the you deal with all these bosses, and you use your inner eye to solve all these incredible puzzles. And I want to thank and I want to thank Ninja Theory for allowing me to allowing me and many others to play it on our channels and and to come out and to come out with this amazing game. It was it was it's about 8 hours depending on the difficulty you play it on. But be but be wary that as you die, you get closer to game over and restart. But the game's about eight hours long, again, depending on the difficulty setting you play it on and how well you are with dodging and taking your time with your sword strikes and your melee attacks and your running attacks and all that. And you learn and you learn and you learn the ancient lore of the Vikings and about their battles with the Northmen by collecting lore stones. Ancient runes scattered throughout the world Senua is traveling through. And they tell you and they tell you all of the past of the lore. And it was a good it's an amazing indie project and I and it's a it's a triple A caliber game. So I highly recommend that you guys go out and buy it. It right now I believe it's only available on the store, the uh, PlayStation Store, and I'm sure it's on PC and I'm sure it's on Xbox One as well. On the PlayStation Store, it's thirty bucks, but it's definitely worth playing playing from start to finish. It's 12 chapters long and you and you get to learn about how psychosis affects affects the human mind and you really you really get the feel for the character you really get the feel for Senua as you learn more and more about psychosis and about her struggles within herself and confronting her demons now number number six on this list is is a game is a game again another game i didn't hear much about prior to me playing it it's uh near automata where it had these and where it was these androids 9s and 2b it's a they were traveling across this futuristic dimensional world where they battle they battle other androids and the androids were called Adam and Eve that took human like human like forms and bent bent war on 
all the androids and all the life forms and all that. But Nier, Nier Automata was an incredible game. It had amazing cinematics. It had a good story to tell, too. It's still The story still is pretty good. And then you see... Then you see that the that emotions that human emotions build inside inside nine S and two B when at first you think androids aren't capable of human emotions, but the more the more you learn about these characters, the more it becomes apparent that they they feel human feelings for one towards one another. And it was, it was, plus, plus it had, I believe, seven endings. So once, so once you complete, once you completed the game and got to an ending, it, it jumps right up and gives you a chance to find, to discover one of the other endings of the game. And it, it depends on actions you take while you play the game that lead to the the multiple endings that branch from the first ending but from start to finish it had a lot to offer and it's definitely a must own if you're if you're into the hack and slash genre of of RPGs it's definitely a high caliber AAA game number number 7 I touched on it in my previous video as one of the as one of the stand as one of the top standing games in its series and that's Resident Evil 7 that introduced a first person Texas chainsaw kind of atmosphere where you really where it really brings you back to for survival horror at its best and for a long running series that had it and that's had its ups and downs capcom really knows how to bring you right back in and pull you right back in to a new generation of resident evil number number eight this one is by far one of the best games i have ever played not just recently but of all time and it's horizon zero dawn where we come across this orphan girl that was dubbed an outcast because she was motherless in the in Aloy who who is outcast from her who is shunned from her tribe because she as i mentioned had was born without was born with no mother or she was without a mother when she was when she was born and she was taken in by an outsider and she picks up this device that, this focus that lets her see the ancient secrets of the metal world and why, and why the demonic machine, machines and are, he, are in the world and, ta and took over. It was, a world, it was a world lost to machine life forms. And she, and she develops... She develops kind of a hard road because she loses her mentor. She she become but she become but she triumphs over all the all the criticism that she's dealt with her whole life. She she becomes seer of the whole tribe. She becomes a high pre a high handpicked by the priestess by the by the oracles of the tribe that sh once shunned her and she leads an army against the machines and she ultimately stops the threat of the machines and then when and then when the frozen wilds came out the dlc for this game she she gets to go up in the snow and discover more about more about gaia the um uh, gaia, gaia was the all being of a new of a new of a new life. She was Gaia's the program, the beginning of the beginning of a new world, a fresh new world, 
with no danger, no imminent danger coming across. She learns more about Project Zero Dawn, and it was it was one of the best games of this past year. Number number nine is a game is a game I tried to play, but I would always I would always uh, fail miserably. And then when I, and then it was almost like Dark Souls, but it was like more of a more of a Walt Disney type type of art style. And I'm and I'm of course talking about the hidden gem on the PC, Cuphead, where it showed where it was two brothers who mistakenly made a deal with the devil himself in his casino and bet every and bet their souls on a game of dice. The game the dice were rigged and they lost. And in ex and they pleaded with the devil to to spare the spare the for them to keep their souls and the devil sent them out to con to collect the contracts of of all the people in the world of of all ugh, of all the people he made bargains with. But this game's difficulty is is reminiscent of Dark Souls and Bloodborne. This game this game had some of the most insane boss fights. Had a had a mermaid that turned into a gorgon, uh, a bee that turned into a plane, a lady a lady that turned into a crescent a mechanical steampunk crescent moon, and the devil who turned into a giant red face and a cat looking thing but once once you get once you got over once you got through a boss fight this this game's like a this game like a blitz of boss fights throughout the whole thing but once you get through a boss fight and you go into another it's almost like dark souls where you're satisfyingly happy that Hey, I beat this and I'm moving on to the next. And then once you beat the devil, you release everybody that you that you beat to get to him. And they and they're all happy and they're all free of the debt that they owed the devil. And this game This game was definitely one of the one of the odd ones, but definitely one of the ones you should check out if you're a PC gamer. Now the last game on my top 10 game of 2016-2017 is Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. You want to talk about difficulty? <laughs> this game took the cake in 2017. With, it, with its amazing open world concept for, for the Kingdom of Hyrule and you see many many stand-ins for the long-running Zelda franchise. You see Link, of course, you see Princess Zelda. I'm sure you see Ganon somewhere in there. He's he's always in there. And then you see the tri the Triforce always makes its mark and the Master Sword always leads the way, plus the horse Empina. Or it's a new horse in this one, but definitely you would have to take the boss fights one fight at a time because areas require were over level the difficulty increased at each new area you got to and if you were if you were under if you were under under ranked under equipped you you would you would fall you would fail you would fail miserably and they in the game would the game would punish you for it because the increase because the increased difficulty would just knock you out in one hit and you would have to go back to the previous checkpoint but grinding through this game it's definitely one of the best it's definitely one of the best Zelda Zelda games in the franchise second to or it might have even surpassed Ocarina of Time and that and that's a hard one to top. Ocarina of Time was a was a milestone 
back in 1997. I'm sorry, 98. And Breath of the Wild, it was definitely fun. All right, guys. If you agree, if you have your own top 10, feel free to let me know. I'll see you guys later.